So, as we all saw, uh, Professor Tomato did indeed fail his MOT. So, there's a few things to do. Now, I just don't have time because I'm in the process of moving house, doing loads of other stuff. Plus, you know, I'm a bit of an old man, really, and just working under cars, it, <laughs> it really does take it out of me. So, I'm taking the uh, easy way out, and uh, Anton's just set up his own place, and I'm gonna take it over and get him to do a couple of things. The first is that downpipe, which has the which is leaking. Basically, it's they called it a center exhaust, but it's actually the downpipe. Uh, it's got an expansion chamber. That chamber is leaking, and that essentially they're not easy to get hold of. So the best solution for that is actually to sort of just weld it up. We'll see how bad it is once we put it on the ramp, but probably just fixing that is the best way forward. Uh, on top of that, then there is that um, that bottom wishbone which needs to be done. And again, that's just not the sort of job I want to do. It's just, especially without a ramp, it's just a pain in the backside. So uh, I've got a secondhand part coming today. So Anton's gonna do that as well. And then we'll just bleed the brakes together because that was a little thing that needed doing too. So um, just a, a few things to do really still. Okay, so Anton thinks that we can't weld this um, because the metal is really crappy and basically it's just it, it's just not going to happen so i think we're just going to patch it up to get it through the mot and then i will source like a universal expansion chamber like this and we'll cut it here and here and put that back on also because getting those to those bolts up there looks like it's it's just not worth doing and the rest of the pipe's pretty solid so i think that's the way forward for this um for the for the leak on the, have you got the light, Anton? Oh no, actually, I don't need the light. For the leak here, um, the part's coming and Anton's just gonna replace that. We've done the rear brakes and I think that's all the, oh no, and then the wishbone Anton's gonna be doing. <coughs> actually, I can show you the play on it now that we're here. Can you move it? Yeah, there you go, you can see it's, it is actually quite a lot. Brilliant, cheers dude, done. All right, here is Anton's quite neat bodge that he's done just to get it through. The MOT, so there's a strap there, there's another little bit of metal underneath it, and then there's some high temp silicone as well. Definitely looking a lot better. A lot of the rust treated that there was, which is really just surface rust anyway. Uh, obviously that doesn't look pretty, but it's not that bad. That is just fuel tank, so there's plastics yeah. under there. Um, and the rest of it, honestly, is remarkably clean. The seals are just great. So, really quite happy with the state of it. Good morning everybody and um, welcome to another day with the tomato. Now, I, I've, we've, we've done all that work uh, and now, the tomato no longer goes straight and that is because with the new wishbone on the car's obviously sitting properly and before the tracking I'm sure had been done when the wishbone was still sort of bending because of that bush uh, so now basically the the tracking is no longer right so I have to get that sorted out apart from that everything else has been done so after that it's basically off to the MOT for the retest and the beauty of it is it should be pretty much a clean MOT now um, because that the, what he said about the front suspension pipes, which was a bit of humidity, that was simply coming from the leaking uh, ram for the power steering. So that'd be nice if it has a completely clean MOT. I will be delighted. So there was a slight issue with the tracking, and that is that this. Um, because of the rear wheel spats, they couldn't get it on their laser system, um, but they did their best anyway to sort it out, and at least it is definitely going straight now, and it feels like it's turning really well, so I think they've kind of managed to get it spot on anyway. Now, next thing is, let's take it in for the re-MOT. Well, everybody, how brilliant is this? Tomato is MOT'd, and it's not just MOT'd, it's completely, it's a clean MOT. I am so chuffed. Um, I mean, this car has come such a long way, 
and I mean, it, not, I am so pleased. Tomato, well done. Also, I really have to say thanks to Reese, who, it turns out, had this hanging around and decided to send it to me. That is really kind, buddy. Obviously, very similar to Pepe, same sort of colour, um, but it is really nice, and it's a nice reminder of um, of Pepe. So thanks, Reese. Really appreciate that. So now that the tomato is road legal and has passed its MOT, I'm putting it to good use. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear stuff moving around, but I'm I'm putting it to good use uh, to help me move to my new house. So it's amazingly practical. You can get loads of stuff in it, uh, and it's actually it is a great little car. Here, though, is the bit that we've all been waiting for. How does the tomato actually drive? well so it's not massively quick and you really have to absolutely thrash the nuts off it to get it to go um, the engine only sort of really wakes up around four and a half thousand revs which I think is totally normal for these Now the seating position is very odd because you're sort of sitting quite high up, sort of perched up unnecessarily high. But the steering is a revelation. It's, um, it's really light but with loads of feel and it really loves to turn in. The tomato is a turner. It really likes it. It's, um, it's on a road like this. It's brilliant fun. It really, really is. Now, um, if you push it beyond a certain limit, it will simply understeer very benignly. If you kind of work with it, it's just, it's just brilliant. So none of the bumps sort of set it off course. So when I said that really when you're driving it normally at slow speeds, it doesn't feel like that suspension is particularly special or different from another car. But when you speed up, that's when it really starts to soak up the bumps. <laughs> Thing slows it down you don't have to worry it really does it really seems to be able to handle almost anything and that steering really it's a joy so in many ways it really reminds me of Pepe my 205 GTI they have the same sort of feel I think probably because of the lightness and I think if you do a sort of I wouldn't say slow I'd say a medium in and then maintain momentum that seems to be the best way to drive it. It's lovely, it's quite poised, loads of feel. Um, the gear change is absolutely horrible, it really is, but I've been, I thought it was this one, but I've been told <laughs> they're all just atrocious. Um, but it's not so bad that it gets in the way of driving it, it just doesn't feel very nice, but you don't miss gears, you can't not change gear, it's just not, not very tact tactile, it, it isn't. Um, the brakes are awesome. I really like them. Now I haven't really, really thrashed this thing yet. So it may be that if you drive it really hard, the brakes will start to fade and they'll be crap. But they take a bit of getting used to because the pedal has a little bit of initial movement and then it kind of just goes solid. Um, unlike normal braking systems. Um, so it just goes solid, it doesn't move anymore, but it keeps reacting to any pressure you put on. And I just, I love that. I really like a solid brake pedal and I can't stand a mushy, really oversensitive brake pedal, which is what most cars, modern cars have. Keeping up momentum and keeping up speed is an art in this car. And that's what you don't get with the modern hatches, which are just so easy to drive. This isn't difficult to drive, but it requires you have to sort of get in tune with it, which makes it more pleasurable, at least for me. There's still a few bits that need tidying up, really. I don't think I'm going to do that uh, in my tenure, but essentially there is that rust above the sunroof that needs looking at. The front bumper, although it is miles better now and it doesn't, you know, doesn't quite stick out like a sore thumb as it used to or look really horrible, 
it definitely could do with a repaint. This door on this side has got a dent and plus there's a bit of corrosion at the bottom so I would say just replace it because they're dead cheap. You can get a replacement door for about £40 and probably in the right colour as well if you look hard enough. Um, what else is there really? That centre silencer obviously at the moment it's been patched but I do think it's going to last quite a long time as it is so I'm not particularly worried about that. And um, the front fog lights I'm going to do so that's going to be done. And really it's just you know it's ready to use but oh the rear passenger door again that has a little dent in it but that will be totally fine to just fill and repaint so on the whole I would say that the Tomato has been a success it's one of those cars that has delivered more and has been better than expected especially if you remember the sorry state in which it arrived um, please do subscribe if you haven't already and I really look forward to seeing you to, for the next one and if you need to contact me then Instagram is the best way